um, we're going to make milk paint. Now, before the, we do that, I'm going to explain why we're doing that. When I was a kid, I made art all the time. My mom always had lots and lots of materials around. And so as I got to be in my, my 20s, I was so surprised how many people had no confidence in their ability to make things. So then when I finally became an art teacher, that was one of my main goals. I wanted everybody I taught to know they could make things and that they didn't have to necessarily even know much about it. They just had to be willing to give it a try and look some stuff up maybe, but you know, you can make things. So that's one of my big messages as an art teacher. So as we were leaving school, um, I was pondering how am I going to teach my art classes when I don't know what materials my kids have at home. And um, so I thought about natural materials and I also thought about um, milk paint. My, my, fourth, my fifth graders are, do, have been working on some abstract paintings and they were really getting into um, this is you, fifth graders, I'm talking to you too, but I'm going to a larger audience as well. We had been painting with acrylic paint that comes in a nice big jug, so they could have quite a bit of paint to paint with um, at a time. You know, they, would, they didn't get the whole jug, but they would spoon out from a container. And so I wanted something that would give them that kind of volume of paint. And I remembered my milk paint project. So this, um, several years ago, I learned how to do, and it's from a Martha Stewart. I went to Martha Stewart. I went searching online, and Martha's was the most straightforward. So you can check for it there. So here's how I first came up with, I need to make some milk paint. Or actually, it was, I need to make some paint myself. How can I do that? And here's why. I took a woodworking class. You can see over my corner, you see that? That's a, that's a, toolbox that I made in my second woodworking class. My first woodworking class we made a, a bench and that bench is now my living room table which I'm going to hold up for you right now. So there it is. A lovely bench which works well as a table and my cat particularly likes when I put balls in the bottom part where it's got that little edge, because then he can kick those around in there. So that's my bench. I brought my bench home, very proud of it. Um, when the class was over, we hadn't, we hadn't finished it in terms of making, painting it or staining it or anything. So when I got home, I wanted to keep the idea that it was handmade, that I had made it. So I went looking for a, a handmade um, paint. And so milk paint, uh, is what a lot of the early settlers painted their furniture with when they didn't have paint stores, right? They, they just um, made their own. It's not a real permanent in the sense that if you were to scrub this down, it'd come off. But it is kind of long lasting. I mean, there's still furniture made from 100 years ago that still has its finish of, of milk paint. Um, but it, it doesn't take scrubbing, but it can take just kind of sitting in a room and, and being pretty. So I made this several years ago now, and just last summer, I think it was, I noticed that one end of this board that I had not painted at the end of that board. I have no idea how I missed it or how I... I hadn't noticed it before then. So I'm pretty pleased that we're going to do this because I'm going to make up some more paint and put it on there. So milk paint is good for raw wood. We're going to be kind of figuring out if it's good for paper, uh, cardboard, things like that. So if I take my lemon juice, here's my tablespoon. I'm going to put one, two, Uh, tablespoons in there. I'm actually because this looks to me like I maybe didn't use and I'm gonna put a little extra. A little extra never hurts. There's just nothing nothing it's gonna do that's gonna harm this. All right so that's what you do. Put the lid on and then you just leave it out 
overnight, maybe even 24 hours, you'll be able to tell by what it starts to look like. So it, it's curdling. That's what's happening. The water is separating from the milk solids and the milk solids will sink to the bottom and the water will be on the top. So here's, here's all it looks like right now. Usually I take a Sharpie and I write on there the date and what I use because I've been experimenting a little bit. So um, like the one I use the ice cubes in, I wrote ice cubes and the fresh lime, I put that on there. If you want to try lemon, all that sort of thing. I'm even a little curious about what vinegar might do. We'll find out. So that's just going to sit out until tomorrow. So what does it look like once it has set out? Well, this is a jar that I did yesterday, uh, last evening. And according to the instructions, it should be ready now. It is kind of thick. See how it's kind of curdy, how it kind of curdled? I kind of think I'd like it to be thicker than that. Uh, because I'll show you why in a second of another one I have. If it doesn't curdle oh, um, uh, by tomorrow morning, I'll just go ahead and use it. But I, I think I'm going to let it wait a little bit longer. Put the lid on that. Here's one that shows you much more the separation. Look at that. A lot better separation. And this one I did yesterday morning. So it had... Actually, maybe even the day before. Um, this was also older milk. It had been in my refrigerator for a while. It was milk that I really didn't want to drink anymore. Um, but it turns out it works fine for making this. So now that it's separated, what you need is some kind of a strainer. And I put a paper towel inside my strainer because those are pretty big holes. And I don't want the milk to go through that. And I have my pot underneath. This is going to go right in there. I have <clears throat> this little strainer at home. That one will work fine. This one is too small, but, but strainers that have that kind of mesh in them uh, would be good. But if they, they need to be bigger, my, my paint would overflow on that. Okay. Notice every time I'm done with something, I'm putting it to the side so I'll have more workspace. All right, so what do I do? I open up my milk paint. It smells a little sour. When you paint with it, the smell goes away, okay? So it doesn't smell like, oh, sour, but a little sour. All right, so I'm gonna pour that into my glub, 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 into my strainer, you can see the water is coming through. The reason I put my paper towel in there is so that the milk solids don't go through the hole. I'm just going to leave that for maybe an hour and let all of that water come out, come through. So I'll set that aside. And so what it looked like was that when it was done. This is from, this is one I finished up last night. Like that. And this one, we really have to, it kind of smells like cottage cheese that's just a little close to the edge, but it's not there yet. All right, so this was a cup, and it actually goes pretty far. So now we've got the actual paint. And um, I just want to say a word about the three things that, caught, that are needed in paint. You need a binder. That's what makes the color stay on the support. The support is whatever you paint on. Is it paper? Is it cardboard? Is it canvas? That's what help, helps it glue on there. And there are the milk fats are what's going to do that um, here. It's not a very strong bind, but, but it'll bind enough. Then you need pigment, which is your little crumbly things of color or maybe your liquid things of color. That's the color goes in with the binder. And then you want um, <clears throat> a medium, which is what makes it move so nicely like paint does. So uh, we're using a water-based um, product here. So our water, and there's water in the milk, so really that's it's there already, uh, is what's making it so it'll move. So we need three things to make paint with. That's what we're using here. If my paint 
if I wanted it a little thinner, I could, once I get the pigment in it, I could add more water. But the more water I add, the less binding it's going to be. So, <clears throat> I took my, my uh, one cup and I made several little pots. These are my little jelly jam jars. But you don't need little jelly jam jars. You just need to look at what you've been eating lately. You can have your little hummus container or your cottage cheese container or your sour cream container or your yogurt container. Notice these are a lot of these are dairy, <laughs> but um, not the hummus. Any of those containers are great, um, especially if you're wanting like uh, fifth grade. Uh, my fifth graders are painting with big brushes. They might want one with a bigger opening like that. OK, so then now we need to add some color. So I am interested in some possibilities for color. You just need to be willing to experiment a little bit. So the, the, the usual coloring that you would use in this would be a dry pigment which is what I used on my, my bench. You should not use this without a mask because it's powdery and you could breathe it in. So I'm not going to, I'm just going to show you what it looks like. All right. And uh, my students, I think we, um, sometimes I do this in second grade and sometimes in fourth grade. And I really don't remember if we've, we've done it with this group, but we have made paint in the past in another way, which I'll make another short video on later. But you put the dry in. See, I went ahead and did it. I should have been where I, I don't have a mask at home. I'll have to get one. I just put it in there and I stirred it up. Okay. And now I have got some paint. And... Here is what I'm going to try it on. I forgot to bring some water in with me. But there, and look, you can really explore how, how it moves. All right? So that's my dry pigment. Some of you might have that at home. Not thinking most of you do. So I'm not... Uh, expecting that that's what you do. Now, some of you might be thinking, that looks a lot like dirt. Frankly, it is dirt, some of this. And uh, you can go and get some dirt and try it if you like the color of the dirt. Um, but you don't want to have any plant life in the dirt still because the plant life will rot. The dirt itself is probably inert, which means it's, it's not going to grow anything, but the plant life might. So if you paint with dirt, um, you can't keep your paint very long. You just got to use it and be done and let it dry somewhere, maybe maybe in the sun, so that you don't get anything um, like a mold or something growing on it. All right, so that was my first try. But now I've got the things I think you might be more likely to have at home. I'm just drying off my brush on some paper I have here because I forgot to bring water in with me. So this kind of interesting thing. Um, I had a bunch of iced tea in the refrigerator and um, I hadn't gotten around to drinking it and I thought you know that's kind of pretty cool color my tea, my tea has kind of a purpley brown uh, color to it and so I took my whole big thing of tea and I put it on the uh, stove and I let it simmer so that it boiled down that whole big amount boiled down to this not boiled but kind of simmered you don't want to I don't think you would want to like be a real aggressive boil you just want to reduce it reduce it reduce it so as you can get as much color in as little water as you can so I'm going to pour a little bit of that not a lot first oh it's kind of a lovely purpley brown then I'm going to mix it in mix it mix it mix it there we go. And so let's see what that color looks like on the same container with the same paper. Oh, it's very thin. So this, oh my gosh, that might make a beautiful, can you see? It does change the color of the paper. It's very thin. I could try 
adding more of my um, tea to it, but uh, I don't. I think all that would really do because it's really not that intense a color is that it would uh, get it watery, watery or without necessarily getting a stronger color. But sometimes you want a really soft color. So that's tea. Maybe you could use coffee. Um, uh, make sure there's no sugar in it. You just want the plain, the plain juice. All right. All right. So that was my tea. Now I thought, well, what else could I use that they might have at home? And I thought, let's try food coloring. So I've got, let's see, what other colors am I going to make here? Uh, I'm going to try the yellow. So I've got my little food color. This stuff's intense, right? You've probably done some decorating with it before. So I'm, because, because this isn't all that much water, I mean, even if I use the whole thing, it wouldn't be that much water that I'm adding. I added a fair amount. I'm wiping off my brush again. You know, a lot of people think you have to wash your brush each time. My students know that I'm kind of a big proponent of um, put enough on your brush to paint with and then use it all and then go back and get some more. You get some interesting things happening here. So this is the yellow, very orangey because I did add a lot. Okay, there's the yellow. I'm going to add this on here. Oh, it's pretty brilliant. Wow, look at that. Pretty brilliant. Neato. So that is food coloring. And um, I don't know if you had this picture 20 years from now, if you would be able to see the yellow anymore. But for now, you will. And that's, that's the fun. We're all about the now for me. So in now, we can make beautiful paint and paint with it. All right. Then I have one more, actually two more, or three more to think about. All right, this, will, this kind of makes me laugh. Um, this is a container of painters, uh, artists, acrylic paint. And I had this color at school by a different maker. And I told my kids, for some reason, this paint is very gelatinous, you know, like jello. And I don't know why. Um, and then when I opened this, it turned out this one was too. So maybe it has something to do with, it's this, it's this same color. It's the same kind of bright neon green. So maybe it has something to do with what is, what is made for that particular color. So I'm going to take some of that. And I know you're probably thinking to yourself, if you've got that, why do you need this? And um, the answer is, I don't. But I want to use milk paint. And I want to color it. And I happen to have that. So I'm going to try it. Mix it in really well. Oh my goodness, it's kind of, it makes the uh, milk paint a little chunky too. That's just, that's just a very strange thing about that paint. I'm not sure why. All right. There is my green. Let's try it. Now, because there's acrylic paint in here, you really have to make sure you wash your brush really thoroughly when you're all done with your painting because acrylic paint is um, plastic. And if you let it dry in your brush, you will get a plastic brush, which is can be interesting to paint with, but it's not what most of us are usually looking for. Now look at that. That one is really crumbly. And it's crumbly, I think, because of the strange quality of that um, acrylic paint that I have. But that could be really cool. I don't know what will happen when it dries. It might easily brush off, or it might stay there all crumbly. We'll just have to wait and see. I'm just going to pull out right now a piece of wood. This is a piece of wood that came in some packaging of something that I got. It's not very thick. I'm going to try some of it on there because I might want to do paint on something a little thicker than, than this thin paper. I'm going to give you a couple other ideas of things that might just be around the house that you could paint on. One is if you have some little pieces of wood like this. I have some file folders. That's a kind of a nice weight. That could be fun to do. Here's another one. I brought home some poster board from school. You might have some poster board around. That's a nice weight. 
And then the other thing is, oh, it's like getting out of there. There. The other thing I have is um, a box. And this was a box that had crackers in it. And um, you can also maybe use a cereal box or something like that. This was a box of Milton's crackers, a box of four trays, actually. And my cat loves to scratch on things. So I just popped it open and I, I laid it down on the floor for him to scratch on. But then I looked at that and I thought, wow, I really like those wings on there. I think I could make an interesting painting on that nice long piece of cardboard. So that's something to think about as well. So um, in addition to having a liquid, nice jar of paint, of acrylic paint, acrylic is water-based, which means you can wash up with water. You cannot do this with oil-based paint because oil and water don't mix. So if I put oil-based paint to color my my milk um, paint it would not mix in they just would stay separate so so you don't want to do that but if you have a couple of uh, tubes you can use some of the tube um, and then the other thing you can use and this is if you look around some houses if you've been if you've had a paint job any time in the last 20 or 30 years at your house um, there may be some leftover paint in the basement or the garage. Now, I live in an apartment and I rent my house, but I happen to know that um, when my when the new people bought the house, they discovered these paints that match the colors of the outside of the house. Uh, so, and they've just been in, in the basement where our laundry is um, for a couple of years. So you can see how kind of yucky and gross that is, but notice it says acrylic paint. So this is kind of an orangey color, but the trim on the outside of my house is, as long as it's acrylic and not oil. So this is acrylic enamel, uh, you couldn't have the word latex, you can use it to do your own paintings with. I remember I met a man on, on the bus once who had some of his own paintings and, and he told me that um, all of his paintings were, were painted with, with house paint, much cheaper. So something to think about. So I just want to take some of this kind of lovely orangey color, put it in there, stir that up. This is going to be a lot like my, the color of my um, powdered paint. Oh, I'm liking that. I have a tendency to really like these earth tones, which are the colors that are, you know, that you can find in the dirt around you. So I'm going to put that back down. I'm going to pause one minute to say, if you've got some of this or some white or, or something like that, um, you can just use it to make your paintings, on, especially on the cardboard. I, I like to put like a layer of um, paint, of, of acrylic paint. And when you're doing a regular painting, oftentimes it'll be white, a white gesso, they call it. But that's basically what we got here. So you could do that. And I've mixed that up. And here's my test again. All right. And I'm going to try that. You can see, yeah, it's very, very similar to my the color there. I've been using this same brush, but I just want to show you. You can use a bigger brush. Ooh. Every brush you have will make different kinds of marks and experiment with it. Oh, look, that's that's getting dry down there. Um, you know, what are different ways you can make marks with that brush? That's making some very cool ones there where I'm... You see that? Isn't that interesting? And also, you don't have to hold it this way like you're holding a pencil. Um, I, I do a lot of stuff where I'm just experimenting. Like, I'm just going to go like this over my painting. With my kindergartners, I call that dancing. So, like, chalk will dance across a page. Or our paintbrushes will dance across a page. Like that. Um, I sometimes paint with the hand that's not my dominant hand. So that I don't get so finicky about what I'm doing. That I can just kind of see 
what a little bit of a lack of control makes possible. So there is some of that. Now, so I made milk paint. I would, uh, when I'm done painting today, I would put the lids on and put them in the fridge if I thought I was going to paint again in the next couple of days. Um, Martha Stewart says it lasts one day. I have found it lasts, depends on how much people are getting in and out of the refrigerator. Um, I think it's, it's lasted a week for me before I um, decided, yeah, it's time to throw that out. But that, the smell is fine, okay? Today. If the smell is not something you like, then just you, you, you stop at that point and say, ah, I'm done with that. But if it were a little smelly like this and I, and I let this dry out maybe in the sun or something, the smell would go away. So that's how you make milk paint. And you can make things. You can make things. A lot of times, you know, a lot of stuff was made before we had stores. And people just had to make it themselves. And so there's a lot you can learn about making art that way. Other things I can think of for making art, uh, for making paint, is if you have white glue, Elmer's glue, and you have water, and you have some clay or some dirt, um, or any of these things that we used as, as our um, pigments. Uh, I have some beautiful colored sand from Arizona that my niece brought me. That is very cool in that kind of paint. If you make that kind of paint, it can have texture and it can have chunks in it because the glue will hold that on. Uh, I'll, I'll do a little, little video about that when I have time. I'm looking around. I want to see if I got everything. I think that's all I have to tell you about how to make milk paint. Let me just look one more time. Here's what you need. You need one quart, two cups of, of milk, 1% or 2%. You need two tablespoons of some kind of a acid like lemon, lemon or lime, two tablespoons or one whole one, whatever that is. And then you need something for pigment. And you can be adventurous finding out what kind of pigment you want to make. So you pour the milk and the lime juice in some kind of container, clean container. You let that sit overnight maybe longer. You're waiting to see when, when it starts to separate out the curds and the, and the liquid. Um, then when it's separated, or if you've waited 24 hours and it still hasn't separated, I've been known to put a little bit more lime juice in, or um, I'll just go ahead and pour it through the sieve and let's just see if that, that does the last separating. But um, then you divide the paint into your pots and add your pigments and you are ready to paint. So, Hope you have fun.